together pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And it's been a little bit of, you know, trial and error. I haven't welded a lot in a while and I'm trying to get back in to the rhythm and just figuring all that out. So I'm no expert welder. I don't weld every day for sure. I weld a couple times a month maybe. So I'm working on that, getting everything together and the wheels are, or the band wheels are looking pretty good for what they are and for what I paid for them. They're pretty cheap from, uh, oh man, Bill, or I can't remember. I'll link it in the description below. But that's where I got everything from for this thing. And so far it's done pretty good. And it's all kind of coming together slowly piece by piece. And in the first video I said, I had a long time to plan for this because I was down for about a week with COVID and that's pretty much all I did. I was thinking about sawmills and once I got up my mind that I wanted to build one, I just, you know, went to town and tried to plan everything out, order everything I need and, you know, get everything together so I could make this as smooth as possible, which, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's getting there, but I hope you're enjoying the videos. And this is something I'm really excited about because I've always wanted a sawmill. Who doesn't want a sawmill? And, you know, I'm hoping that maybe at the end I'll have one. So hope you're liking the videos. Appreciate you watching. Please go ahead and subscribe and let's get started. Well, we're getting somewhere. It doesn't really look like it, but I don't even remember, honestly, the last thing I filmed. So I think I filmed, uh, I think I filmed turning these on the lathe and I welded this axle up, pretty much all it is. I drilled some holes in it and this is gonna be for my cable system. So I'm not sure how well this is gonna work. I was gonna do two bolts and then a piece of metal in between and uh, I don't know, I got lazy, I guess. Just wanted to try to figure this out, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't know how well that's gonna work. So I may have to move this clamp down. Probably would help things out a lot. I think I got it too tight trying to keep my loop up under that bolt. So I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to move this clamp down. But it spins nice, I haven't tightened anything up because I'm gonna still just kind of put mocking everything up, I guess, because I'm gonna still paint everything. But welded this on and got the uh, winch on here. And this is just a Harbor Freight worm gear winch. And the cable was actually coming out of the bottom. So I had to undo all the cable, took the drill and undid it all and then wound it back on coming off the top. So I think that'll work out pretty well. So, and then I'm just gonna put the same thing here and It'll come to this wheel or to the axle and turn and raise and lower, hopefully. So we'll just keep trucking along and see how things go, I guess. Oh, well, I've spent the last, I don't know, hour or so painstakingly getting these curled up to get the right length to connect the winch cable. And I realized I wound them on the backside, which, I mean, I don't know. See, it's, I mean, I, I don't like it. I meant to come on the front side and I don't think my OCD is going to allow me to leave it and it really isn't ideal because it's still this I couldn't get the bearings up any further so it's got to come off the front side to even be close which really sucks so and if this clamp lets go it's going to spin in free for all of cable because this stuff it's a pain in the butt to wind up and I don't know I ought to just count the wraps drop it down wrap the winch cable on it probably maybe what I do is just drop it all the way down and then count how many wraps I need plus I'm trying to leave three wraps that way it's always got three wraps on there that might be the ticket well for now I've just got a drill on here just for ease of testing and getting all the cables strung so it's all the way down right now and I've got this one everything's on so now So I was a little concerned about the cable wrapping right. So I offset these when I welded them on off of where I knew I was gonna try to strap it or clamp it. And I still, I hate these clamps. It's really killing my OCD. But <laughs> for now it is what it is. So I had to do, I put these little turnbuckles on here 
and I had to tighten this one and loosen this one and because it wasn't wanting to go down, it was getting stuck. Even though this thing weighs like, I don't know, it's about all I can pick up. It's probably 200 pounds or so. And so I had a little bit of adjustment. So these were definitely essential, but there's not, I was really thinking there was gonna be a lot of tension on these cables, but I mean, these there probably are, but I'm gonna put two clamps on these. I just ran out and I want on these, these should be fine because I've got three wraps and I'll never have less than three wraps, but these I'm gonna go ahead and get two more and put on. But I think it's working pretty dang good. And so far, so good. Now I'm gonna put the handle on this thing and see how many stinking cranks I gotta take to raise and lower. All right, well, I just pulled the wheels off and now I'm gonna work on my, my uh, blade guides, band guides, whatever you wanna call them. So this is inch and a half and it's two inch, three sixteen. So it should slide in there. It ain't gonna be super snug, but I can always weld a couple bolts on here or something and have them adjustable. And then that's what this piece is for. I'm gonna do on this side, I'm gonna use the, the, to adjust all the way out. And this one over here, I think I'm gonna make it adjust a little bit too because it'll probably be more stationary and I'll probably put bolts in this one to hold it in place permanently but I want to be able to kind of see exactly where I want it. So if I want to come out and solve more towards the middle or whatever I want to do, I want to have this one adjustable too. So that's what I'm working on now. And I don't have clamps. All I got big enough is wood clamps, which really isn't ideal, but it is what it is. It's holding it there. So hopefully, eh, it looks pretty square. I'll get a square on it and try to get it at half. Well, I just picked this thing up for about 150 bucks and it's supposed to have a good motor in it. And it's a, I thought it was an Onan, but I think it's a different brand. That's about 14 horsepower. And I think that, I don't know if it'll pull it or not, but for a hundred, oh, he wanted a hundred for the motor. And, but I was gonna have to wait for him for a while to pull it out, but I needed a gas tank as well. So I can probably make that gas tank work. And now I've got the switches and everything. So hopefully we can make this thing run, make it work. And hopefully 14 horsepower will be enough to get it. But we'll just have to see how that one goes. No, it don't look too bad. I mean, I've seen a lot worse old lawnmower motors and I actually have planned on putting a, uh, a Kohler motor on here because I've got one, but it's, I think it's only a 10 horsepower. So I wanted to try to find something a little bit bigger because I know 10 horsepower won't pull this band but hopefully this thing will do it. But I think what I'm gonna do is try to get this thing running before I even take it off. And that way I know before I take all the trouble of disconnecting and taking everything off just to see if it runs and if it'll run good, then we can go from there. But for now, I think I'm gonna hook, put a battery in this thing, a little gas, see what it'll do. Whew, well, it is freezing cold, and I went ahead and froze myself to death. I got all wet, and went ahead and pressure washed it, got it all cleaned up. I did run it for about, I don't know, a minute, and I'm in a hurry, so I didn't run it very long. But it didn't smoke too bad, nothing, ran good, cranked right up, so hopefully it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and jerk this thing out of here. I think I've got everything off that I need to, and we should be... Good to go. I got the PTO shaft or whatever you want to call it. Drive shaft. I got it on disconnected and muffler wiring. I think we're good. Well, I got it out. And I unfortunately broke the uh, dipstick tube. But hopefully that will be an easy fix. So I got it out. That's all I broke. Not too bad. It's so cold. The water on the Trailer's already freezing. I was slipping and sliding trying to pull this thing out. A little bit heavier than I expected, but it's out. Nah. Well, I got it on there, and I just wanted to really make sure the bolts lined up and had the pattern right. So it looks good, and I had to put it in this direction because of the rotation of this is counterclockwise. So to get, I want my band to spin counterclockwise because from what I've read, that's the direction the majority of them travel and you can have blade issues if it runs clockwise. Kind of just what I read. I don't know how much truth there is to it, but that's why I've got it in this direction. And I'm gonna take this clutch off and swap it out with the centrifugal clutch. 
but for now i just wanted to make sure it actually would bolt up and wouldn't come crashing down but it's got just a i think that's just in the risers but so far it looks pretty good well i got the pulley changed out and now i went ahead and cut my keyways and shortened my shaft to match the pulley up here so they're in line and cutting these keyways with a grinder is about a pain in the butt well i got the uh belts for the wheels the other day and i just now i'm getting around to putting them on i looked around and looked around the only ones i really could find were on amazon and it's b56 or bl590 and they're only about nine bucks a piece so it was tight fit let me tell you i had to use a little soap and it twisted on me and then working that twist out was kind of a pain and i've done i did a little reading a, a lot of people say if you leave the belt loose it gets rid of sawdust but my idea is it's gonna probably it's, it's gonna stretch i mean all belts stretch so before long when you run it a couple hours and it's probably already going to stretch out a little bit probably by the time i actually get it put together it'll probably be loose on there so that's my idea get one that fits tight now and hopefully it'll last a while all right well i've got all my axles in and i went ahead i don't have a belt yet i've got to order one and i don't have time to run up there today and get one but i've been trying to rack my brain and figure out how i want to do my tensioner and i think i pretty much decided on the hardest way possible so this was off that lawnmower that i got that, that motor was on so it really worked out about perfect but what i did is i cut a slot with the grinder all the way down through here and this way i can just loosen this bolt up and i welded a square in the back where it can't turn and i can just slide it up and down as i need to tension the belt so I think it'll work good. It was literally probably one of the hardest things I've had to do yet, but that was just because I guess I'm in a hurry and kept messing myself up more than anything. Well, I zip tied a belt, but I think it's gonna work pretty good. My only concern is right here. I don't think it's got about an inch, inch and a half of clearance, but that's about it. I may end up, I mean, I can always put something under the motor and jack it up about an inch or so but i think it'll be all right because it's going to be pulling the rotation is this way so it'll be pulling like that i don't know that's going to be the exiting side of the pulley so it may not but hopefully it'll be all right well my bands finally came in and i'm pretty tickled with it i actually somehow ordered pretty close i actually think i could use a hundred and 81 these are 183 inch and i've got them a little tensioned i didn't put too much on them but so far it seems i mean obviously my wheels are way out because these are still loose because i haven't i mean i'm just putting it on here to make sure it'll work i got the right length but I haven't got quite that far but so far so good i mean i don't know i need to do a little reading and see exactly i mean that feels pretty tight but I don't know exactly the tension on these things. But it meant, that's probably still a little touch loose. Probably one pretty tight, I guess. But I did have to invert it because I guess these bands go for a clockwise mill, which is really not what I wanted. I didn't want to have to invert it from what everything I read. They come already somewhat with a touch of an arch. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how they track, how they run once we get it going. But I got these from Smith Sawmill Service, and I didn't actually know that they've got a location in North Carolina, or about, uh, they're a little ways away from me, but I mean, I could still drive down there and save the shipping, but that'll be nice to know. So we're getting somewhere, and I'm working on, I was gonna put my battery mounted on the back back here under the winch, but I decided it was just gonna take too long of cables to get down. Once I drop this thing all the way down, the cables would have to be like, eight feet and i mean i've got the wire but it's just a lot and i figured it'd be easier just to mount the battery here and i'm still going to run i'm going to put all my controls on the back and i can run all my control wire i'm still trying to figure out how i'm going to keep attention on the fuel line coming in because i'm going to mount the fuel tank up here 
and I don't want one on top. I just, I want a big fuel tank and that way I can run this thing quite a bit and I'll have to refill it. But I'm wondering if that's the best decision, but we'll see. So I got my belt and everything. I don't remember what I videoed last, but you know, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere and the belt's a little tight. It was an 88 inch and I really probably should have got to 90, 89 or 90 because it's a little tight. But it'll work because it's going to stretch out. But I'm just, it's exciting to get the band on here and see that. That's pretty neat. Just kind of, I mean, I've honestly, I've never even seen a bandsaw blade. These bands are just wood miser bands. And I got them probably, I mean, I mainly got them because they're kind of cheaper. And that was kind of my main goal. I don't want to spend, I don't want to, I'm trying not to sink a ton of money into this thing until I know it's actually going to work. That's kind of where I'm at with it. So. I think, I feel confident I can make it work, but until I know, I'm not going to spend a ton of money on a bunch of really good blades, and we're just kind of going to go kind of cheap. Cheap to start off with, you can always buy. Well, I'm getting somewhere, kind of. I'm still, I don't like this, but this thing is completely backwards, but it is what it is. And the way this thing mounts, I wanted to make like a fancy little thing here, but tech with it so this is what i got this is i'm not going to use a key switch or anything i'm going to wire this up just like so emergency kill switch stop i guess i didn't really need that but i couldn't find one with a latching and a momentary so it came with two momentaries and a latching but it should work the only problem is this thing's not i don't think it's 100 percent waterproof so i may have to use a little excess silicone but I'm going to try to keep this thing covered at all times. And I went ahead, put my little bracket in here, welded this up, welded a crossbar with a handle back here. So you can stand back here, have your buttons right here, choke, and then throttle. So, I mean, it's working, but I'm just not, I may take the grinder and notch this right here. Just so this cable is sitting here a little bit nicer. I don't really like that, but... This is, I actually had this choke cable. I somehow ordered two of these and had an extra one. So it's a pretty expensive choke cable to use, but it does the job. So I've got my battery box welded up with some tabs and see, so I got my fuel tank mount all welded up and I think we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just kind of get, I wanna get everything mocked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mount this like so. And we can go ahead and I guess I could start wiring. I don't know if I wanna mess with that yet. I don't know. But my main goal is to get everything kind of mocked up. And I just came to the realization I've still gotta do an exhaust. And then I want to bring this back up and go ahead and make my guards, which is gonna be a feat in itself for me. So I still haven't, this little, I got this little welder for $50 from my uncle and it's worked really good, but I've really used the stick welder more than anything. And I haven't really figured out how to weld real thin stuff with it. So I got some, it's not super thin, but it's pretty decently thin. I don't even know, maybe a 16 gauge, but we're gonna go ahead, I guess, I'll pull this thing up and then tomorrow, That'll probably be my main objective is to get the guards around these wheels. And well, I went ahead and decided I'm going to go ahead and wire this up and then I could just unscrew it, take the whole thing off whenever I go to paint it. So just, I've got my kill switch and my stop button. I decided to use both. I may use either one. I don't know, but all I did was just take a jumper through the switches. That way either switch is open and it'll kill the circuit to the ignition coil. And this is my start circuit and it's just, common normally open so whenever you push the button it'll close and send power to the solenoid so i think i'll be all right well it's getting pretty daggone late and i've been taking a lot longer than i hoped but i went ahead and put the blade back on and i've tried to align these the best i can and this one this is the tensioner and it just keeps wanting to ride right there I can tension it all the way pretty dang tight, 
I'm still trying to figure out exactly how tight is too tight, but I get it pretty tight and it still wants to ride right there. So I've still got to adjust this one out just a touch, but it's running tr pretty true as long as I don't have too much tension on it. It runs pretty good. And I went ahead, took my inch and a half that slides in here, welded this all up, and I made these a while back ago, probably a month or two ago, and got this welded up. And I'm gonna use a bolt right here, I think, to that way I've got you know a little bit of play up and down. Not much, I'm not gonna have a lot up and down, but back and forth and try to get it true. This is tracking. I mean, it's obviously not tight. You can see the wobble. But because I'm getting ready to haul butt for tonight, I've been down here for about three hours. It's probably about midnight now. So I'm going to call it good for tonight. I've still got to get this one over here done. And this one's going to be stationary. I'm going to put some bolts, weld some bolts or weld some nuts in here and make that one completely stationary. And it's going to ride probably right about here or here, somewhere right in here. I'll probably make it a little bit adjustable where I can bring it from here to here, but that's going to be about it. And then this one's going to be a long one. And also, it's still got to weld this in place, but I want to get it kind of, I want to get it kind of right, try to. And well, that's probably going to be the last thing I do because I'm really kind of worried about the height because these things, I really need to tighten this up somehow, but that's going to be it for tonight. I'm about whooped. Well, we're going to go ahead and end it here. And, you know, it's been a bit of a process. It's been, it's taken me a little bit of a while. But, you know, we're getting there. It's coming together. It's starting to look like something. What? I'm not sure. But it's kind of looking like a sawmill. But I'm just going to go ahead and end it here. We're going to go ahead and I've got everything welded together. And now it's pretty much just getting the motor ready to go and getting everything, you know, pieced together. But the old motor off the lawnmower seems to be pretty good, so I'm gonna go with it. And it's 14 horsepower. I think it'll I think it'll pull pretty good. So we're just gonna go ahead, get that thing cleaned up, get it mounted up, and get all my pulleys together that I ordered. And there's a calculator online. I'll try to link it. That's really helpful that you can determine your band speed that I use to try to calculate my pulley size. So we'll see. But hopefully everything will work out and. We'll go good. So, as hopefully it'll have enough band speed to get going good and cut fast, at least decently fast. I'm not, I'm not going to be cutting wood for production. So, hopefully soon we'll have this thing up and going and painted and pretty and running flawlessly. I hope that's that's my hopes. But we'll see. You know, this is a, a trial experiment, so we'll see how it turns out in the end. But I appreciate everybody watching. Hope everybody's liking the sawmill videos. Please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.